Welcome to Law of Academia, and well, you probably noticed the music isn't going, and we're going to do something a little bit different this time. I'm not talking to you in character about what you can learn, no, I'm talking to you storytellers about something very important in Vampire. Now, when I went into my LARPing obstacles about Vampire, the biggest obstacle is really experience. A new player coming in after a year being like, hey guys, I want to help people. I like to be a part of a team or a part of this game. And then they look at them and say, what can you do? He's like, well, I can do this. I'm like, Jimmy can do that better and three other things. Why are you here? And that person really starts to wonder, why am I here? And experience is a big issue when trying to get new people into Vampire the Masquerade. Now, part of the reason why this was is that many LARPs still go, well, many LARPs for Vampire still go with the V20 system, or the 20th anniversary system. And there are a few, uh, a few different criteria for awarding experience. The first one is automatic. You just get it automatically because... You're there, you showed up, you should get something. The next is if you learn something, not what did you learn today? I learned that I shouldn't kill people. No, no, you have to actually learn something that is important to your character. Like I learned about my I learned this about my character, that he'd act this way in these situations, or that she'd act this way in this situation. That is the learning curve, which is debatable in groups if you'll get it every session or not. I mean, if you're really trying a little bit, you should. It's not it's not too hard. But the next one is role playing. Now you also should get this experience point because you should be in character and be having fun. So you should on average really get it's two to three, but really three experience points because the last one is a little bit harder. It's um, it's heroism, which is it, it's not standard. It's you're doing something that is different than ordinary and you could get a fourth experience point but uh, whatever now that's per per night or per session now at the end of the story or at the end of the uh campaign whatever you want to call it it's the end of the story of the book and usually what most people say it some people say it differently but the end of the story gives you extra experience now this extra experience at the end of the story is given sort of in a similar criteria, but a little bit more subjective. The first one is success. Did you succeed? Yes. Congratulations. You get an extra experience point. Okay. The next part is, was it dangerous? Now, <laughs> I have seen some players try to make some stories be a, seem a little bit more dangerous to get that extra XP point, but usually it's not that big of a deal, and it's... It's up to the storyteller if it was really dangerous or not, or if the players were too clever. But if the players were clever, then that could be style points, where you came up with something spectacular in order to get past, uh, in order to get past this obstacle. And according to the book, you would earn generally three per session and possibly seven maximum if you completed a story and got all those other criteria. Now, seven's a lot, especially when you compare it to the fifth edition, which they recommend, hey, one XP per session, one XP per night, okay? One XP per night, and at the end of the story, you could award other stuff, but really, you want to keep the XP low. Now, there's a few reasons for this. The longevity of Vampire, well... It doesn't have great longevity, to be honest, if you try to award at 3 to 7 XP per session. If you try to award at 3 to 7 XP per session, then the game will become unbalanced very quickly. We, when I was playing, played for about 10 months, give or take, and I was there almost every night. Some players weren't able to be there because of real life issues and stuff. Missing a few sessions is fine, and some players had to be gone for a few months and then came back. But... After a certain period of time, I started to notice a few things. After three months, there was a huge disparity in power gaps. If a new player came in, they wouldn't nearly be as strong as me, or even some others who were there a little bit less. At six months, I, a non-combat character, was probably better than an introduced character for combat, and they just didn't have much to bring to the table. Everyone else was a lot better and able to do more. At about ten months... I mean, there was no comparison. There's about no point for a new player to come in and think that, oh, I could do something, because that point has long been departed. You have 
a ridiculous amount of XP gaps between each other. And while that player might be earning, oh wow, 3 XP per session, I'm also earning 3 XP per session. And while getting from 25 to 38, it reduces the gap from 130 or some crap to like 143, it's not, it's still a big gap, and the gap doesn't close. So, this is where we have the problem, that new players don't feel like they'll be able to do anything. And granted, this was on a weekly basis, but you could stretch it out over, um, over twice a month or once a month, because in all honesty, it's just elongating the time. If you want to check out our article in the description down below, it goes into more of the numbers as to what it would be like, and I would highly suggest that you get that a read because it has more detailed information and has a lot more of the math kind of thought out. So if you want to check on the math numbers and see what that's kind of like, see the longevity on your game if you're awarding about 3 XP per session, then I would highly check, uh, highly suggest to check out our article in the description down below. Now, on to 5th uh, edition, the idea of giving 1 XP per session. Well, that takes care of the longevity a little bit. I mean, it delays it, but it delays it so much that you have to question does it really matter? I mean, if you have a game going for about seven plus years, then yeah, that's a pretty good long time. I mean, it's and not not every vampire game will get that far, and in fact, most won't. So, one XP per session does solve the longevity problem, and I see why they did that in fifth edition. Here's the problem: How do you feel when you get one experience point? out of, let's say, 12, you need to get your new discipline. So you get one experience point. I know 12 is not actually what you need, but let's let's use that as an example. Let's say you get one experience point. Like, wow, I just need 11 more knights in order to get one more dot. That doesn't feel very good. Okay, that does not feel very good at all. And while it does take care of the longevity problem, it's like the people who were designing this were thinking, hmm, how can we make Vampire last longer? I know, we could cut down the XP, and they they forgot that this is a game that's that involves fun, and they forgot the idea that it's it's rewarding to put that XP down and to feel like you've earned something after all these nights. After spending 36 hours, you're able to get what discipline? I mean, you should probably do that a little bit less, and you might not even want to save, but there's there's a few different ways of looking about it. Now I'm giving 1 XP per session a harsh rap, but really there are different ways that you could do XP. You could do it at the slow XP of 1 per session. You could do it normal, about 2 to 3 per session. Fast is like 3 to 4, very fast is 4 to 5, and what I call ludicrous speed is 6 plus. Now, you might think, oh, ludicrous speed, who does it 6, six XP per session? That's ridiculous, it'll burn out the game like that. and. While you are right, there are ways to make any of these XP speeds work. Now for slow experience, you have to have players who aren't really into the experience, they're more into, well, the experience points and buffing up the character that way, they're more into the role play and the story, and experience is just a number. Now these are players who are very rare, usually storytellers or dungeon masters in D&D &D or something like that, where they understand that the game is not in the stats. But really, I mean, that's not most games. If you do have that game, congratulations, that's awesome. You'll be able to have a very long-lived game by just going by normal means. However, that isn't as fun. So, for the majority of people, if you want to go with 2 to, X, two to 3 XP per session, I have a few homebrew solutions for you. My personal solution for the 2 to 3 XP range is new player experience. Now this is me looking at other LARPs, seeing what they're doing, and kind of figuring an idea to lower that gap. Because again, if you go... I mean, the gap still... It, it still is there, so you want to eventually bridge that gap where the older players go up a little bit, the new players can catch up a little bit. Maybe not all the way, because the new players have earned that XP, but you need some catch-up mechanic for it. And what I recommend is that, you know how um, 
those criteria before where, oh, people showed up, they role played their character, they did this and that. Well, you can add an extra criteria for experience, and that is the newbie experience, the new player experience, whatever you want to call it. Each new player that has been playing for 10 or less sessions gets 1 to 3 XP per session. Now, it depends how drastic the catch-up that you need is. If your game's still going and there's some people who are just, ah, 15, 16 sessions, you're into the whole campaign and story of the night, well, okay, maybe it's 1 XP. If people have been playing for 3 years, give those new players 3 XP. I mean, you might even want to boost it up to 4 if it's that ridiculous, but... Well, no, I'd, I'd suggest with three. But if you play longer, like let's say seven years, yeah, maybe four, maybe even five. You want to make sure those new players just boost up. But the point of caution that I'd say for four to four to six extra XP is that these are new players. They don't know the game. They don't know what they're doing with their experience. They'll probably screw it up. So four to six is a little bit much, which is why I, I'd say to stick between the one and three. And it shouldn't be that drastic, because usually you won't have a game going on for seven years, which is why the 1 to 3 works very well. But new player experience as a new criteria is a way to close that gap and make it so that when a new player comes in, older players don't look at them and just, Peasant? You think you can do something? I mean, you can't. Well, you can. You can be fodder for this night and never come back, because you'll hate the game and you'll hate life and you'll hate everything about this night will give you the worst experience possible because that's really what happens to new players so instead older players will be like oh you're new yes what what are you interested in because the older players know that the new player can quickly become anything they can become a gun-wielding maniac, which they don't have in their group yet. They don't have someone who's able to use guns, and they've been really getting hit by some stupid hunters here and there. They might have someone who's good at investigating, or someone who doesn't know what they want to do, and the group can say, well, if you don't know what you want to do, we have, we are lacking in this department, this department, this department, please help us. And the new player will actually be able to be useful quicker, and not just be left in the dust because an experienced player has put one or two ranks in that, which is as good as a new player probably has. Now, my next solution that I have for faster pace games, you might think, oh, getting four to six or seven XP per session is ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, it is. But there are some groups that do this and they have a great time. Now, how do they do this? One way of making a 6 XP or something ridiculous per session not be too ludicrous is to make players have to uh, acquire their new skills. And it might be so drastic as to acquiring their new ranks. Now, this is a little bit intricate, I know, but think of it this way. You've gained uh, 6 XP for 3 sessions. You think, man, I need to, I need to rank up my discipline. <laughs> easy. Only problem. It's not that easy. You need to find someone who has that next rank in that discipline. You need to find someone who is better in that skill than you are. And while, yes, it kind of scoffs on the idea that you're learning XP while you're going, you could narrate it that you're learning XP, but you just need that little boost to get to the next level. You need to have someone else because by yourself, you can't achieve the next level. And you need to bounce ideas and things back and forth between someone else who's at equal skill or greater than you. I mean, you can spin it however you want, but that's a good way of doing it. Now, if you do this, it makes the players maybe bank up XP, but even if they have 30 XP, they can't spend it right away. And if they want to spend it on something giant, like let's say spend 18 experience on something, well, at this point, they need to find someone who is actually that well-versed in whatever they want to spend that experience on. This means that the players have to go and find this person. They have to... Uh, try to search out an NPC, they have to work with other players, and it makes it so that the players actually drive forth the story, make their own narrative, and try to uh, enhance the game and not just sit there and be like, all right, <sighs> plot, storyteller, um, when, when's something going to happen? We're just going to sit here. And instead, they'll take the initiative and they'll go and do something, which is what you want in Vampire. You want people to have their own little side plots going. And if someone's trying to find a trainer, 
then you could have another vampire who doesn't want that person to be trained go and kill that trainer or bribe them not to. And you can make all these intricate mind games just from this system, which is really what vampire is all about, is the political manipulations and machinations. Now, another way to do this is if you are giving a decent amount of experience. This doesn't really solve the longevity problems and the new player problems, but it solves a problem where all the experience is going into one thing. So let's say your players have realized, hmm, really the most overpowered thing we could get is disciplines, and we're going to spend all our XP in disciplines. Well, that takes away options in the game. You want to make it so that your players approach things creatively. You don't want to have the venture just say, I'll use presence, I'll use presence, I'll use presence, I'll use presence, I'll use presence. No, you might want to make them actually do something else. Like, let's say, have the venture, I don't know, look up the person's information and then do a threat, blackmail, whatever else. That would be interesting. So instead of making them all just focus on their clan disciplines or whatever skills they're going to, if you see this is happening or think this will happen, you can force split the experience. Now, what do I mean by this? You get three points of experience per session, let's say. You now can only spend two on whatever you want, which is disciplines, of course, because you're still going to do that since you have the idea that disciplines are awesome. And the third one, third one, has to be spent on something else. Now, it could be that this person just saw, well, I'll spend these extra experience points on abilities. I mean, I'm still spending it in one area. Great. Now they're diversifying and not just spending in disciplines. And they are spending it now on abilities, so they have more options. So force experience split is a different way of solving a different problem. But no matter how you do experience, there will be a problem. If you try to do one experience per session, it will solve the problem of the uh, slow burn and the gap between new players and experienced players. But it's not that fun. You can work in some groups if you have the right group for it, which is why slow experience is an option. Some groups like to have an average of two to three experience, which can still be a problem, and there are ways to deal with it. Some groups want to go four, five, or even six plus XP per session, and there are ways to deal with it. It really depends on your group and how you are going to make new players still feel welcomed, because new players are the lifeblood of any game, and honestly, Vampire has a problem acquiring new players after games have been going on for even a year, which isn't that long when you compare it to most of the LARPs. So I hope this discussion on experience has been beneficial to you, and if you agree with any of the things that I've stated, leave a comment down in the comment section.